Would you ever have believed that the planet Mars, which we now know as a dry, dusty desert world, was once covered by rivers, lakes, and maybe even oceans? What happened to all the water on Mars? On this fascinating journey, we will explore what happened to our neighboring planet. We'll uncover evidence of water on Mars, from the earliest observations through telescopes to the latest findings from Mars missions, and we'll clarify what these discoveries mean for the future. When we look at Mars today, we see a dry, reddish landscape characterized by desert-like landscapes, mountains, and deep canyons. But this first impression is deceptive because Mars harbors secrets that point to a far wetter past. The history of the discovery of water on Mars goes back to the 19th century, when an Italian astronomer named Giovanni Schiaparelli used his telescope to discover strange linear structures on the surface of the red planet. He called them canali, which initially meant nothing other than channel. The Italian astronomer associated the word canali with existing waterways, and a false report was already in circulation that lasted for many years. There were reports around the world that artificial waterways and an advanced Martian civilization had been discovered on Mars. This discovery led to enthusiasm, but also to a kind of panic as the idea of Martians was born, and they were not always portrayed as friendly fellows in literature and later in films. Today, we know that these canali are not the work of extraterrestrial beings, but rather represent natural formations, which do, however, point to the former presence of liquid water on Mars. Modern space probes and rovers have long since clarified that there are no Martians on Mars. It was shocking when the first space probes from the 1960s onwards showed images of a completely dry and barren world. Nevertheless, we humans are not giving up and our Mars exploration missions seem to prove us right. Orbiters and landers have found huge, dried up riverbeds that stretch for hundreds of kilometers, sedimentary structures that are typical of ancient lakes and deltas, and minerals that are only formed by the influence of water. Particularly noteworthy in this context are the discoveries made by the Mars rover Curiosity, which found traces of former rivers and lakes in the Gale Crater on Mars. These findings are not just simple rivulets, but complex networks of dried up river courses and sediment deposits that indicate that water once flowed abundantly here, possibly for millions of years. This evidence prompted researchers to reconstruct the history of Mars, and what they found was shocking. Computer simulations tell the story of a Mars that was once similar to Earth, with a climate that allowed liquid water on the surface. But the questions remain. What happened to all this water? How did Mars transform from a potentially life-friendly world into this arid, inhospitable landscape that we know today? Map reveals usable water ice. It sounds incredible, but it's true. We've had the water on Mars right under our noses the whole time and just haven't seen it. Scientists from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory analyzed data from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and Mars Odyssey orbital probes. These two probes scanned the surface of Mars with two heat-sensitive instruments and discovered something that researchers did not notice at first. Using the data, Researchers have created a new map and discovered that large quantities of water ice are apparently hidden directly beneath the surface of Mars. For many years, researchers have puzzled over where all the water that once probably existed on Mars has disappeared to. Did it really evaporate into the atmosphere, or did it retreat underground in hitherto unknown ways? The NASA scientist's map now reveals that Mars only appears to be a desert planet on the outside there are probably rich deposits of pure water ice both at the poles and beneath the surface of the red planet. Based on the heat signature, researchers can examine the entire Martian soil from Earth and draw conclusions about the presence of ice. It's very cold on Mars, with temperatures averaging around negative 20 degrees Celsius during the day and dropping to negative 100 degrees Celsius at night. Only near the equator during the summer do temperatures reach peaks of up to 20 degrees Celsius. Interestingly, ice conducts heat better than dry ground. Astrogeologists can also localize large ice deposits in the ground using the heat radiated from the surface of Mars. The researchers used the Odyssey probe's gamma-ray spectrometer to localize the ice deposits. Gamma-ray spectrometers measure the gamma radiation that is produced when cosmic rays hit the surface of Mars. 
This radiation changes with the chemical elements present in the soil. Since hydrogen, a main component of water and therefore also of ice, emits a characteristic gamma radiation, the spectrometer can identify areas with high concentrations of hydrogen, which indicates the presence of ice. The result of these measurements is a map that can precisely show the location of water ice on Mars and even its depth. Apparently, the water ice is only a few centimeters below the surface. This important discovery not only helps us to understand what has happened to Mars, it's also of crucial importance for future Mars missions in which humans are to live on Mars for the first time and explore it. In plain language, this means that Mars settlers would only need a shovel to reach fresh water. In places, the water ice is only 2.5 centimeters deep and the Martian soil is not particularly solid. The map shows that the best area for water and thus perhaps also for an initial settlement is Arcadia Planitia, a plain in the mid-latitudes. This place would be of great interest for scientific research as it shows traces of volcanism. We want to understand Mars not only in terms of its history as a water planet, but also to trace its entire geological development. How does the vapor get into the atmosphere? Something that many people don't know is that water vapor was detected in the Martian atmosphere back in the 1970s. This important discovery was first made by the Viking missions in 1976. The two Mars landers were equipped with instruments to analyze the composition of the Martian atmosphere. To the great surprise of the researchers on Earth, the two Viking probes found traces of water vapor in the thin Martian atmosphere. This showed that the Martian atmosphere is still capable of holding water. So there is a low level of humidity on Mars and it has to come from somewhere. Today, we know that the vapor most likely comes from the ice layers and that small amounts of water evaporate when Mars warms up regionally at certain times of the year with temperatures in the plus range. This discovery was revolutionary as it indicated that Mars, despite being an arid and inhospitable world today, still has active water cycles. The fact that there must be water vapor on Mars was actually already shown by a completely different phenomenon that we are all familiar with. Mars is not called the red planet for nothing. The red color comes from oxidized iron in the Martian rock, and oxidation of iron only takes place where there is moisture. Even back then, the Viking probes provided evidence for the presence of chemically bound water in the Martian soil. In the 1970s, it was assumed that this water was trapped in the minerals in the soil. Later space probes, such as Mars Odyssey and the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, as well as the Spirit, Opportunity, and Curiosity rovers, have proven that many Martian rocks and soils contain hydrate minerals. These minerals are formed when water reacts with rocks and is chemically bound in the structure of the minerals. All of these findings suggest that there were periods when water was abundant on Mars and that Mars was once a much wetter environment than we see today. However, these findings raise further questions. We now know where the water is today, but what happened to turn Mars from a rich water world into a dry wasteland? What happened to Mars? It is fascinating to see how scientists today are able to reconstruct almost exactly what happened on Mars based on the findings and data. Rock samples, soil measurements, and water courses that are still visible today provide enough evidence to reconstruct the following scenario. Unlike Earth, Mars has no protective magnetic field that could protect its atmosphere from the constant attacks of charged solar particles. Over billions of years, this solar wind has eroded the upper layer of the Martian atmosphere, releasing water vapor and other gases into space. The Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution, or MAVEN mission for short, has provided data showing how the solar wind has influenced the Martian atmosphere and slowly removed gases from it. These influences are still present today. With the loss of the atmosphere, the atmospheric pressure on the surface decreased and the surface water began to evaporate. At the same time, the greenhouse effect diminished, leading to a cooling of the planet. This cooling intensified the loss of liquid water as it either escaped into space or froze. Another key aspect of water loss is the chemical bonding of water in the minerals of the Martian crust. Research by Caltech and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory showed that today, 30 to 99% of the former surface water is trapped in these minerals. Over time, the water 
has been incorporated into the structure of the minerals through chemical reactions. This process has practically removed the water from the Martian water cycle and locked it in the crust. There are now numerous conclusive reconstructions and documentations of how Mars developed from a once water-rich world to the dry and dusty landscape we know today. These processes probably took place several hundred million years ago. What's next for Mars? As you probably already know, NASA and the private space travel company SpaceX are planning to send humans to Mars in the near future. The first settlers are to explore the planet and find out whether Mars can be colonized. Overall, Mars is currently a rather inhospitable planet for humans. The air offers no oxygen to breathe and the temperatures are very cold. It is always a little darker on Mars than on Earth because there is no atmosphere to diffuse the light. Before water was discovered, it was questionable whether humans could even survive and sustain themselves on Mars for more than a few days. Water makes this possible. Water offers far more than just drinking and utility water. Fuels and even oxygen can be extracted from the water resources on Mars. Become a subscriber now to never miss an incredible video again.